Good afternoon. My name is uh, Mark Jason Gilbert. I'm professor of world history at Hawaii Pacific University, and I'll be your host today on Global Connections. Our guest uh, is Rick Romer, an art director and designer, uh, very famous within Hawaii. Uh, distinctively, uh, uh, he was the uh, uh, direct art director, set director of uh, films, theaters, and television in Hawaii for many, many years. Most importantly, uh, was the director or art director or designer for many film, theater, and television shows uh, produced locally. And we're going to talk a lot of those uh, because they range from Magnum P.I. Uh, to Lost. In fact, uh, we might have a picture of Lost up here. You can give an idea of the kind of work uh, that he has done. Uh, Rick, hi. Hi, Mark. Well, this is going to be this is going to be fun uh, because your career is so long and it's so varied. See, how so many hours do we have today, Mark? Uh, I think I, I think we'll do fine with what okay. we have. Yeah. Uh, you know, normally when we start one of these kinds of interviews off, we ask, you know, uh, how you got interested in the field. I know you came to the University of Hawaii, and right. that was an area in which you got your degree. I actually um, have no formal training in yeah. film or television. Mm -hmm. I was an MFA in theater, mm -hmm. stage design, lighting design, mm -hmm. and uh, spent eight and a half years at Diamond Head Theater. Mm -hmm. And um, because of the proximity of the theater to the film studio, um, it was uh, pretty soon I was building or creating things that uh, they didn't have time or in some cases even know how to build. So Higgins' uh, Bridge on the River Kwai, um, that was me and my toothpicks. And, uh, yes, I always, I always remember that because it's so distinctive. <laughs> and you made three models of that. Well, beginning, middle, and an end. end. Yes. Uh, uh, so it, 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 you know, and there's always a thrill. I mean, I'm not a performer of any kind, but when you see something that you personally have created on the screen, you do kind of get a little bit of, you know, thrill out of it. I have uh, to admit. <laughs> and, and this, this actually, uh, just for those who are interested in becoming uh, uh, designers. Uh, this opportunity actually came from a dinner where someone mentioned your name? Oh, yeah. That, this was, it's, I call it my Lana Turner Schwab's drugstore moment, even though that supposedly never really happened. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I wasn't wearing a tight sweater either, not that that would have worked. But, um, yeah, Buck Henshaw, who was the, uh, the dec set decorator on all 12 years of Hawaii Five O, the original founding member of the uh, set decorators union in L.A., and the first three years of Magnum P.I., um, needed needed some help at one point and uh, that's that was sort of my entree into beginning to help and then eventually I needed to get into the union which I did and uh, just things fell into place mm -hmm. and uh, was there is there working on Magnum PI actually for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, was there a kind of singular moment or set direct uh, a, a set challenge set that you had to look actually, at yeah. set decorator challenge uh, well, every day, every day was a challenge. Every uh -huh. script was a challenge, um, but at the same time, looking back on it, um, I didn't know how good we had it. There were so many places we could rent from, and there were so many more sources than exist today. Um, but it, it it was just a different time, and getting to work with people like um, uh, Jackie Cooper and and. Uh, um, uh, can't even think of. I mean, f famous actors who became television directors later in their life. Um, and, and Magnum PI was a top ten TV show for many years, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and and maybe again, who knows? But uh, uh, yeah, it, it, there is really hard to say any one defining moment, uh, one special set. Um, uh, it, it was just a daily challenge that I met and mm -hmm. had a great crew and worked with really great people and. And, um, but the, the business has changed a lot since then. It, it, uh, uh, the, the power that the set decorator had in those years is pretty much, you're now, it, it's, the, it's the production designer. Television's gotten a lot closer to being like film than um, remaining how it was in those days. So mm -hmm. a lot of changes. A lot of changes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I remember, uh, I've seen a still of uh, Higgins' uh, apartment mm -hmm. at the at the estate mm -hmm. in Magnum PI, uh, and you know you look at it and you see that this must be where Higgins lives, this old British right. uh, experienced right. officer. And uh, you know, production designers, set designers, set decorators, they all have to. Uh, make sure that that's a space in which the actor actually would live. Don't well, they? I call it telling the story, uh -huh. and set decorating is telling a story. Um, I actually created that set. A lot of people 
uh, give me credit for when I when I started on Magnum, it was the fourth season, so all of the permanent sets had been created. But when they would throw in a, a new set like Higgins' bedroom or his girlfriend Agatha, um, her home, um, even his living room, um, I, I got to create that. And when I say create, basically they gave me the walls, and then I made it into what what it became. And in those days, I would meet directly with the director. And independent of the art director, and uh, but in obviously working in collaboration with, and and be able to have the creative, creative, I don't want to say freedom, but uh, freedom within what it is that I put on the set, as long as it told the story and reinforced the character, which which is really what set decorating is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, while you were while you were working after or during. After when you worked on Magnum, uh, you had a was it two two years working on Jake and the Fat Man when they were filming in Hawaii? Oh, it was way more than that. It was like yeah. two years in Hawaii, two years in L.A., right. um, and and the the way we found out our show was canceled in L.A. is that Steven Spielberg had uh, was going to be using our soundstage for him, a movie he was going to make about dinosaurs, and we all thought dinosaurs. Well. It was the first Jurassic Park, so yes, <laughs> obviously exactly. he, he lasted a lot longer. <laughs> well, people have been canceled for a lot less. Oh, yeah. So, well, so I, the show pretty much run its course. Yeah, and st yeah. strangely, never syndicated by the creators of the show, the Viacom, the biggest syndicators. But that was, again, another really popular top ten TV show that um, unfortunately kind of has been forgotten, except for Bill Conrad. But uh, it, was, it was a big show. It was a good show. And I got to work in L.A. for two years. So. Yeah. And what was that like? I mean, you've lived, lived well. It was for a like it was. I called L.A. the land of conspicuous consumption because uh, anything you could ever imagine was there, and you could rent it. <laughs> and the prop houses, the, the size of Macy's, uh, uh, were were common. And it was mainly. I mean, I have the ability to shop for multiple sets at the same time, just kind of file it away. And uh, I had a great time. I was a kid in a candy store. I mean, uh, we, we don't have any resources like that and, and probably never will in Hawaii just because of the volume that is done there. Mm -hmm. But um, that, it was a great experience. Um, we, believe it or not, Diagnosis Mo Murder was a spinoff of, of, um, of Jake and the Fat Man and ultimately obviously more popular. But um, I was offered that show, but it was, it was moving to Denver. I'd been gone for two years. Hawaii's my home, so I came back, and, um, and I'm glad I did, and I'm still here, and I'm still working. Yeah, so. that was a Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah, yeah. Played he was, for many, he was many years. Great to work with, too. Yeah. I mean, a real pro, and, and st still is. Uh, uh, still going. It's still strong. going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, um, do you ever, re you know, because of the, of the, the way production, uh, TV, film, theater production goes, did you ever have an actor who wanted to contribute to what you had done to a set? Saying, you know, I want to walk over here and drink out of this glass as a bit of business. No, that would have been more yeah. from the, would have probably gone through the director. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a lot of actors who wanted to buy things off the set at great <laughs> discount, which could sometimes be arranged and other times not. Um, uh, but yeah, I actually had very little interaction with the actors unless it was somebody like, Carol Burnett or Frank Sinatra or somebody I wanted to just happen to hang around and watch. Um, uh, usually by the time the actors were on the set, I was already on to the next one. Um, as soon as the director um, accepted you know, what we had done, uh, we were out of there because there's always the next set and the next set. But it, and, and if it's a really special set or if it's somebody with an actor who I've always enjoyed or wanted to see more of, eh, it could delay a little bit. <laughs> That's really interesting. Do you, um, when can, you mentioned a little bit earlier uh, that uh, things have changed in terms mm -hmm, of uh, mm -hmm. set design, set decoration, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, why is that? Well, a, a real obvious one is technology. Um, uh, we're sitting in front of a green screen that the viewer may be seeing the Eiffel Tower or the Parthenon or, or any, anything they want to put back there. And mm -hmm. um, for example, on Y50 right now, they, they can do three and four. Um, moves a day because they're hauling around digital cameras and much smaller lighting equipment. In the old days when they had film cameras and needed all these you know, heavy equipment and generators, uh, moving at all was usually a, a, a big deal because while you're moving, um, you're not filming, and when you're not filming, you're not making money, so it all translates to that. So the, the action in films is, or television, um, when, when you look at something like a Magnum PI episode, and it's not airing here, but on occasion, and when it does, 
uh, it, it's, it, it seems kind of slow moving. Uh, uh, 1983, 84, MTV changed the way we film things. Uh, two seconds is kind of a long shot now. It's one second, half a second, things happening, cars exploding, uh, running into a room, clear, 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 and they run out. Um, some uh, set tech creator had to create a whole set for McGarrett to run into and say clear and run out of the set. And uh, so you have a lot more activity, you have a lot more action, and that's what people want. And so that, that has changed. Um, my working relationship, um, I, I have, I'm the, actually the first person from Hawaii to get into the Art Directors Guild, um, working at a, a, at a level that um, I, I would now tell the set decorator what I wanted to see, what my vision was. When I started, it, it was my vision. <laughs> but it, it just it's changed. Um, responsibility has changed. The amount of detail has changed. High definition TV, you're seeing labels on things. Um, clearance, I, I could hang any picture I wanted on a set. And now, un unless you can clear that picture, meaning get the person who has the rights to it, which is not you, just because you own the picture doesn't mean you have the rights to it. Uh, and if you don't have the rights or you can't get the rights, you can't hang the picture. So um, it, it adds a lot more. There, there are now full-time clearance people as part of the crew who do nothing but clear images or clear backgrounds and um, so that they don't get sued. And so there's a whole, a whole world of things that we didn't even think about back then. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's changed quite a bit. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you mentioned uh, casually that you had an opportunity, if you had an opportunity to see an actor at work or get mm -hmm. to talk to them a minute. Uh, did you ever have an opportunity to bring someone onto a set in a background or something like that? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, my sister uh, happened to be visiting me, and it was her birthday, and we were filming a big scene with Sawyer on Lost. And it was at Bob's Big Boy that we had made into a, a, a Iowa diner. And I talked to the, uh, the person who places the extras. She was a good friend of mine, a second AD. And uh, she put my sister in a location that she was guaranteed to be seen a lot. <laughs> and I, even that, I told her, I said, don't be telling everybody you're going to be on camera because a lot of times you, know, you get cut. Well, she wasn't cut. <laughs> she was there. And uh, she was right next to Josh Holloway. And she had a great time. It was a very memorable birthday and more people saw her that day than probably saw Olivia on the stage in his entire career. I mean yes, that show was yeah. hundreds of millions of people all over the world. So I, I remember once mm -hmm. uh, since the uh, White Pacific University, it's on Fort Street Mall, it's downtown campus, mm -hmm. and uh, I went, went into class for a couple of hours and I saw them setting up uh, the street for mm -hmm. the shot and when I came back outside it was Bangkok. Right. With all the signs I remember and, and, that. and tie. Yeah. And I think you, you've mentioned this to me earlier, the idea of wrapping the bottoms of the palm trees so they look like a walnut or... Oh, yeah, they're, they're actually is more the art department than set, set uh, decorating, but they're, they're, they have what they call skins that they can put over things to make them into other things. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you're limited as to how high that skin is that yes. you can actually see. But, um, um, yeah, we, we uh, downtown Hawaii was London. It's been... I mean, I can't even think of all the locations. Yeah. Um, you know, Big Ben chiming over Fort Street on another episode. It was, uh, it was fun to see what they would add to what we had already done. Um, but yeah, we've, we turned, turned a lot of places into uh, uh, other, other things. And that's, that's part of what Art Direction does, is, is uh, if, if, if you were to ask me what is Art Direction, it's basically everything you see on the screen, except for the actor. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what's in the room, what's behind them, what they um, uh, interact with, uh, the doors they open. And uh, of course, you're not officially watching that, but it's, it interacts with the actor. And the actor is, is casting and hair and makeup and wardrobe in terms of breaking down um, what, what, what departments are involved with them. But the, the art department is, um, it's, a, it's a big department. And uh, uh, it, it can range from creating a set from scratch in a studio to modifying an existing set on location um, and, and anything in between. So it's a, it's a pretty wide, wide uh, uh, department. <laughs> Just, just for the fun of it, uh, The Descendants was filmed in Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they made a big point of using actual locations. Mm -hmm. So if a, a goat was tethered to the lawn and uh, was mm -hmm. eating the grass, 
it stayed in the frame, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do you ever have a, a favorite uh, scene set in Hawaii or something that was a, a particular interest to you? Because, you know, there, again, Hawaii, ha uh, for example, in Lost, they turn the subterranean uh, satellite uh, city hall mm -hmm. on underneath King Street, mm -hmm. and they turn the steps down to it into uh, London Subway. Oh, right, right. right which really right. impressed me because I walked past that which on my way Which was home. probably just a sign yes. and, uh, uh, and us telling you that it was the, the London <laughs> exactly. Subway, and then you, of course, accept it because, yes. Uh, yes. yeah, no, I, I, it's hard to... Uh, Okay. I mean, literally thousands of, of, of sets to have. Um, if I had to pick one, it would probably have been, I think it was the second season I had done of Magnum, which would have been the uh, fifth season. And I was able to furnish the uh, Cook Spalding House, which later became the Contemporary Art Museum, mm -hmm. furnish it one more time. I had a huge budget, and, um, uh, and we, it was starring a relatively unknown actress playing the good sister and the bad sister named Sharon Stone. <laughs> oh, that's right. And, uh, yes. Yeah, that was, that was something. Um, we, you could kind of tell she was going to go someplace, but, uh, and so she did. But um, the, the, to see that house that was so magnificent furnished one more time before, you know, it, it was turned into a museum, that was, I was pretty proud of that. And, uh, uh, and of course, the other issue I guess I've, I should mention is by the time I was doing 5.0, I would say anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of what we did on a set was not seen at all. Mm -hmm. um, you simply did it because you didn't know where they were going to film. And um, whereas back on Magnum, um, we had directors who would say, I'm only going to see from here to here. And you could trust them. And later, if they said that, they come in and say, no, we're going to see over here now, no, and it's not dressed. So uh, that also has changed. Um, the, the, um, it, it's just different. You, you give them 360 uh, ceiling floor, everything, and um, so it's more costly, but it's just how it is. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll come back uh, after this short break. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to uh, Global Connections. We're talking to Rick Romer, uh, designer, set designer, art decorator uh, in Hawaii <laughs> for many, many years, uh, working on every, everything from Magnum PI to Lost. And uh, we, were, we were talking about uh, uh, individual experiences that you might have had. Mm -hmm. now, later on, we'll talk a little about the career uh, of a set designer, a set decorator, uh, and your own work more recently uh, working as a designer. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm always curious. Uh, I, I saw the first episode of Lost in, mm -hmm. in real time, so to speak, and that, that plane crash was pretty impressive. It, it, was, it was downright scary. <laughs> yeah, really, tell us something about that. Well, a little bit of background on that. We had three pilots being done that year, and Lost was the last one. I had actually done North Shore, and we'd even started the, um, uh, the uh, we were on episode one. Um, they really wanted me on Lost, and I turned them down three times. I said, it's a plane crash, yeah, I don't know, bodies and burned luggage. And, but as it turned out, it, it was, especially that first season, uh, without a lot of the network and corporate involvement that later resulted on that show, um, it, was, it was just an amazing experience. And, um, um, you know, actually studying debris fields, uh, it kind of kind of got into. Um, but the the actually the way J.J. Uh, Abrams shot the pilot, um, uh, it was pretty much I call it my haul and dump theory of set de set decorating, where you simply haul everything and dump it, <laughs> and they pull out what they want for each shot. Even though we had these things all we thought figured out, 
um, things were created basically for every shot. And of course, we had that big hulking plane in the background, um, the uh, the burning one on Mokalea Beach, and we had the fuselage uh, was in um, Heiakea in, in the jungle. Um, uh, it was a real plane. It was cut into pieces and shipped over here. And uh, uh, we had to move it at one point when, when flooding occurred during the winter season, which actually prompted the script to say they're going to be moving out of the plane, which it, the, the show was kind of fluid. I mean, they, they literally did make a lot of it up as they, as they went along. So uh, our moving of, of out of the plane into um, uh, the, the, the jungle, as it were, uh, up on Police Beach, um, was um, uh, kind of caused by the fact that it was winter uh, surf in Hawaii and, uh, uh, you know, they didn't fight Mother Nature. They went with it and it became part of the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, you know, there, there's an interesting issue, which is uh, what about this kind of job today? Well, today, again, things have changed a little bit. Um, more and more, uh, the, the films that are coming over here pretty much bring everybody with them. Um, they, they bring, uh, at least through the decorator, maybe even the lead man, um, all comes from L.A. And it's primarily because these people have worked together before. And, uh, and I understand that. If I was going to go to Des Moines and do a feature, I'd, I'd kind of wonder, well, who am I going to find in Des Moines? You know, well, as it turns out, there might be some good people, but not knowing that ahead of time, you might feel more comfortable bringing people that you've worked with. And, um, uh, and that's kind of how things have been going. Um, so I have actually been doing more. Um, I just art directed a national uh, Supercuts commercial, um, a, a great, a pretty famous director. Um, uh, you kind of have to wear a lot of different hats in Hawaii. You can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm a set decorator or I'm an art director. Um, you know, you want Christmas decorations, <laughs> I'll do them. Uh, you want a big party, I'll do it. Uh, I've been a creative director for... Uh, for a, a local um, events company, um, and, and it's all it's all part of the same world. It's design, it's creating, mm -hmm. and um, I, I find it all just as interesting. And, and mm -hmm. um, you, you certainly don't uh, can't get stale. You, you have to keep reinventing yourself, reinventing your work, re and and you don't really have a look. Your look is well, what look do you want? And and that's the look you get. So you don't want to be too tied to, you know, you only do this or you only do that. It it. Um, and in Hawaii, you, you can't be because you're doing so many different things all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's one of the challenges and also one of the things I enjoy most is that I get to do a lot of different things here. And if I'd stayed in L.A., I'd be, you know, one of 200 other set decorators or 500 art directors or whatever. So um, but the trade-off is, you know, it's a few <laughs> lean times here and there, but it's kind of how it is. And you just do something else, that's all. Well, recently you did a little work on Lion King. A oh, that's a, whole, that's a whole other career, uh -huh. but uh, something that's kind of funny how it happened. Uh -huh. um, uh, I worked in theater for, for more than 10 years in lighting and set design, and for some reason, um, the only work I've had here, professional work, has been as a dresser on everything from um, Lion King, I forget, 150-some performances over a five-month period, um, uh, uh, Les Mis, a Phantom of the Opera, and... Um, uh, uh, just uh, basically anything that's come to Blaisdell, uh, uh, even an occasional opera. And uh, it's, it's a connection with theater that I, in some ways, never really had, because usually by the time the show opened, again, I was on the next one. I wasn't there every night. But it's a discipline. It's a, um, uh, it's a whole different mindset. It's really not creative, per se, because you're doing exactly the same. In fact, creativity is strongly discouraged. You do exactly the same thing you do every night in exactly the same order. Uh, and if something else happens, then you know you kind of go with it. But then occasionally things would happen. It's live theater. But uh, I, I, I love, it's still my little theater heart uh, working backstage. I, I still enjoy it, uh, although it really has literally nothing to do with it. Uh, film and television, but it's a. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate that I usually wind up getting the leads, which is, I'm, I'm honored to be working with the level of some of those people, and uh, uh, and they expect and demand a little more, and I give it to them. So I, I'm, I, it's a challenge. I love challenges. So uh, it's 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 another 
aspect of what I get to do in Hawaii. That's great. <laughs> well, we have two images to look at just as we come to the close of the program. Uh -huh. uh, one of them is uh, uh, the McGarrett's home. Uh, there we are. Yeah, uh, there we are, <laughs> which, which because of some distant connection to the people who owned it, I actually went to a party there once. Uh -huh. And before it, it yeah, I, I think just just as 5 with 0 the, was uh, re, uh, Well, this, this was an interesting challenge yeah. because it was an existing home, uh -huh. and they had chosen it for the pilot. And uh, I don't get to say anything like uh, he he's the cop, but he's got a house on the beach. Well, they always have co houses on the beach. So anyway... Um, we furnished it according to the vision of the director, primarily, um, whose favorite color was brown, as it turned out to be. <laughs> but uh, uh, so w when the series went, and I started as the set decorator, um, filming there pretty much every episode required that we went into their home, we packed up all of their things, we brought in all of our things, then we had to repack up all of it. You know, it, it was a, 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 a several day process. And uh, about halfway through, well, I'm not halfway through, maybe five or six episodes into season one, they said, let's build a duplicate of their, of their living room on our soundstage, which was then at the advertiser building. So it was an, an interesting thing because some of the objects in, in the, on the set belonged to the owner, which we couldn't use. Mm -hmm. And um, so we found, yeah, I don't know that anybody really noticed that there was kind of a little shift in, in things. Uh, uh, at one point in the, in the show, but uh, uh, we built a duplicate of the house and um, got to make doorways a little wider that were a little inconvenient to get equipment through and make a few little changes. But um, and then actually started adding rooms. We we added a kitchen. That the, the kitchen in the house was way too small to film. Actually, in. I remember that kitchen very well. It was very small. Yeah, yeah. It was like a fifties kitchen. Uh, well, even. it was more like a thirties <laughs> kitchen, <laughs> but uh, maybe remodeled in the fifties. Uh, but yes, yeah, it the was joys, uh, the joys of set decoration. Right, right. And art direction. Uh, we've been talking to uh, Rick Romer, and uh, we enjoyed it. I certainly did. I hope you did. Uh, please watch for Global Connections uh, every Thursday at 1 o'clock. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, thank you, thank, Rick, thank you, for Mark. being with Great. us today. Okay.